Deb, did you did you always want to be a teacher? No, I actually wanted to be an engineer. You did? Yeah, I started out. And then I decided to be a teacher because I think part of like you, I love working with people. Uh-huh. I love that part. Yeah, I can't imagine um, working in a place where I didn't have contact with people. Now I know there are people out there because I have my husband and I have my own business. And I, you know, I helped him in that business and it was a computer business. And, and that's an industry where you may not be so involved with people. I just didn't like it. I I just had it. Yeah. Well, when I did, when I was in the computer industry, I liked the problem solving aspect, and I liked when I could explain to people what was going on. You know, even with the, the selling of the products or teaching people how to use what you made or built uh -huh. on the computer. <laughs> but I missed. I missed the business school. Yeah, I would say I was probably. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a lot of time where you're just sitting by yourself behind a computer. Yeah, and I just, I don't know, I just, I, I guess it isn't that, it's not, that's not a great job. It's a great job. It's just that's not something I could do. Yeah, I, I, yeah, like I said, it looks, the other thing with me is I just get really bored really fast. <laughs> so, doing hair is great because, you know what, I get to do hair color and then I get to do a cut. So it's always something different. I'm not always doing the same thing over and over and over. No, no I think it's also nice, too, that now we change a lot of careers in our lifetime because the world is changing around us. So I actually like that I yeah. have done different exactly. things because I think yeah. that helps exactly it helps it. me no matter what career I go to. Yeah, I agree with you. So like knowing some different things you pick up or like you say, well, oh, no, business, you aren't uh -huh. uh -huh. Well, and honestly, um, part of my job with um, my manufacturer that I educate for, I've got to do things like I have to do reports, weekly reports where I have to tell you know them what I've been doing in the field because I, I work in the field and I have to you know, do expense reports because they pay for my um, expenses and things yeah. and I have to know Excel and I have to know Word, I have to know those things so even though I'm doing hair and, and I'm not on the computer a lot for hair I'm on the computer doing other things. And you also, to my business. and I think too that, you know, people think, well, if you go into the computer field or math field, you do not need to have your writing. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what job you're in, you need to communicate, and many times your communications are through writing, or even if it's through talking and putting presentations together. That's exactly right. Because honestly, I stand up in front of stylists and talk all the time. And then, of course, I write weekly reports, so I have to do a lot of communicating. And even, I think, even if I weren't doing that for the, the manufacturer I work for, I do that here in the salon. I'm always talking with people, always communicating. You know, <laughs> how would I know what my client wants if I can't communicate clearly with them? You know, if they yeah. can tell me. And you have to be able to ask questions to yeah, find out, exactly. especially because everybody's a little different in how they tell you. Yeah. So you might have to ask some questions to get to what it is. You're exactly right. Yeah. Now, do you have a moment to explain why hair is curly or not curly? Yeah, I do. We were talking about that when we were shampooing out this hair. Um, she, we were talking about curly hair and straight hair and, um, and that sort of thing. We were actually talking about the makeup of hair. Hair is actually made up of three different things. The very center layer is called the medulla layer. The medulla layer is not present in everybody's hair. Some people don't have it. Um, really, there's no purpose for it as far as science can, has figured out. There's no real reason for it. Some people have said that um, it's kind of like the trash can for the extra protein that's in our hair. But really, that's never even been proven. But so, the medulla is a very central layer. Then the layer outside of the medulla layer is called the cortex layer. The cortex layer is where everything happens in hair. Yeah. It is where all of your um, natural melanin is stored. It is where the cysteine bonds are stored. And what cysteine bonds actually are is they're a chain that goes through the center of your cortex layer. And what they do is they um, 
it's kind of interesting because when you wet them, some of them, they're like a chain, and some of them when they get wet they open up and they will relax. And that's why you can take um, curly hair and blow it dry straight, or why you can take straight hair and curl it and come out with a curl. Because that bond opened up for you, and then as the hair dried, it formed, it, it seals back up. So it seals back up in the shape that your hair is. So if you put it in a roller, it seals in that shape. Or if you took a flat uh, blow dryer and smoothed it out, it dries in that shape. Now actually, the reason why or what creates curly hair or straight hair is the hair follicle. Every hair has a follicle. The follicle is where the hair is actually produced. It, and what your hair really is, is it's just protein. Um, it is your body's way of releasing the protein in your body. It's not a living thing, um, otherwise you couldn't get a haircut because it would hurt. Um, it's just extra protein. But everybody's follicles are shaped in certain ways. If you have a very round follicle, it's round round, then you're going to have straight, straight hair. So like if you were Asian or um, uh, Indian, you probably have follicles that are straight or that are round because their hair is normally very straight. Um, if you have curly hair, then your follicles almost, um, almost uh, flat, almost elongated in a flat space. And so depending upon the amount of curl you have, that's going to be the, the shape of your follicle. It can go all the way from round to almost flat and straight and anything in between. And what is in between is what takes you over the